And earlier today, President Biden delivered a message to the hundreds of hostages being held by Hamas and to their family members who are living in agony every day. Mr. President, Mr. President, can you address the hostages directly and give them a message of hope that resilience is these traveling back? Yes, I can. I've been talking with the people involved every single day. I believe it's going to happen, but I don't want to get into detail. What's your message for the families? Hang in there. We're coming. Joining me now is one of those family members, Moshe Levy. His brother-in-law, Omri Moran, was taken by Hamas on October 7th. Moshe, just start by telling me a little bit about your brother-in-law. Yeah, Omri, um, my brother-in-law, is, is a sweet, kind, gentle man. He was a shiatsu therapist, a gardener. He was a spiritual man, very connected to nature, a dedicated father. He, he let his wife, Lishai, my sister, to invest her time in a, developing her career, and he would take care of the, of the girls. Uh, they both have Ronnie, who is two and a half years old, and Alma, who is only seven months years old. Seven months old. Um, Omri uh, is an amazing person, um, and we miss him dearly. Uh, and, and I hope we'll, we'll get to see him soon. He's been captive for more than a month now. What more do you know now about his condition than you knew a month ago? What are you learning about his condition and where he may be? I, I wish I could share with you any, any news about his well-being, his physical, mental well-being. We know that as of last week, he was alive. But we also understand this is a fluid situation uh, and things change every second, um, which is why we're already six weeks, almost six weeks too late mm -hmm. to release Omri and release the rest of the hostages. We already learned yesterday of the horrific death of one of the hostages, um, as confirmed today by the, by the Israeli authorities. And the inter all the families are really worried every day, every minute of their, of their days about the well-being of their loved ones. What what are the mechanisms? How are you being kept appraised of what's going on? Are you in constant contact with the Israeli government, the U.S. government? I mean, what are, what are the mechanisms for you to know anything more than I know about the status of Omri? I can tell you first that I'm an Israeli citizen. We're, my family is Israeli citizens. We're not American. Mm -hmm. So we have no direct contact with the American government. The Israeli government does provide some information to the families. They do have some... Uh, allowing us to learn a bit more about the situation. But to be honest, we, we can't know everything. And because there are, I'm, I've served in the IDF for six years, uh, partially in the right of an intelligence role, and I understand why they can't share all the information, for, um, because it keeps them safe, the hostages safe, when not all the information is shared. What they do share with us and what they can share with us, they do. And we appreciate that. Why was it important for you to be here for this march today? What message do you want to send to an American audience about what's happened? I would say this march today uh, it was a momentous uh, uh, part of our movement right now to call for the release of all the hostages. It's important for the American public to understand and the, the entire world to understand that we have to fight for the release of all the hostages uh, it's a humanitarian issue. It shouldn't be a polarizing political issue. Anybody who identify with one side or another should, under should support the idea of releasing all the hostages um, because they're not supposed to be part of this political game. Mm -hmm. They're supposed to be with their families, with their loved ones. And we, as I said, we're already six weeks too late. Um, and, every, and time is of the essence. We have to bring them home. And I hope the American public uh, will support our message and keep pushing the U.S. government, keep pushing international stakeholders like Qatar to uh, ensure that uh, a deal can be reached or any other kind of solution can be reached. I understand you're meeting with some lawmakers tonight. What are you going to be pressing from them? What, what role is there, do you think, for the U.S. government to, to do more to bring people like your brother-in-law home? I will start by saying I'm not here to criticize any governmental body whether in the U.S. or Israel. I think a lot of things are being done in support of the families. Um, what I will ask them to do is to keep this issue on top of their agenda. The issue of the hostages has to be at the forefront of the Israel-Hamas war uh, because, um, as I said, the hostages are not supposed to be political players right. and should not be used for poli poli politics. And that's what I'm going to be my message to policymakers in, here in the U.S. and is the messages of all the families to policymakers worldwide to bring them home.
Much I so appreciate you coming in and, and telling us a little bit more about this. I know this is something that I think I speak for pretty much everybody, certainly at this broadcast, but I think across the country, people have not forgotten about this. This is the kind of thing that all Americans are thinking about on a daily basis and will continue to. So thank you for coming in and telling us a little bit about your family. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.